Hi, this is Thomas with Cozy Grammar speaking to you from my Cozy Writing Yurt, where we're in the middle of a session of Ask Cozy Grammar. These are sessions that we record live, but then record so that we can share them with people for whom they may be useful. Uh, our next question comes from Hakeem A, writing from Vancouver, BC, uh, who asks, what is a simple way to keep from getting the words adopt and adapt confused? Now, Hakeem, this is a fantastic question and one that I particularly love as a poet. Uh, in fact, let me throw one more word into the mix. Adept. So we have three words. Adopt, adapt, adept. As I'm sure you can imagine, these words are easily confused. Just looking at them, you can see why. They all start with the letters A-D and they all end with the letters P-T. All that changes is the vowel between those letters and the sound associated with that vowel. And as a poet, I love this. We usually uh, tend to think of poets rhyming vowel sounds at the ends of words like uh, bell, gel, smell, swell, something like that. Uh, but in English, it can be surprisingly powerful to rhyme consonant sounds while we change the vowel sound, as in adopt, adapt, adept. In fact, we have examples of this already in the language, like swim, swam. Here we have the same consonants, but the vowel changes. This is something, by the way, that Emily Dickinson loved to play with in her poems. Swim, swam, or run, ran, uh, or eat, ate. There's already a kind of poetic music in our language, in, in these seemingly simple uh, verb forms changing from the past tense to the present tense. Now, these words, uh, adopt, adapt, and adept, are similar to these, except that they are not all different forms of the same verb. They are more like uh, these three words, hit, hat, hot. Here we have three words with a consonant that stays the same at the beginning and the end of the word, but the vowel sound changes. Uh, and because like hit, hat, hot, adopt, adapt, adept, sound similar, it's very easy to get them confused. In fact, there's even a greater danger. The danger is you think, oh yeah, adapt, adapt, adopt. These are the words that are really confused. So what you remember is, oh, these are the confusing words instead of what the meanings of these words actually are. So, uh, Hakeem, I'm going to give a simple way to keep these meanings clear in your head. Let's start with adopt. Adopt is a verb meaning to make something one's own. Uh, you can think of examples like a parent or, or parents who adopt a child, or kids who adopt a pet, like a pet hamster or gerbil. Now notice, adopt has the O in it, and so do the words one and own, as in one's own. Both of them start with the letter O. And so we can use that, uh, it's a kind of mnemonic clue, if you, a memory clue, a memory device. We can use that to remember, oh yes, adopt has the O, like one's own. Ah, yes, adopt means to make something one's own. Adapt, by contrast, is a verb meaning to take something and apply it to uh, a new context or a new usage or, or to change it to use it for new circumstances. Uh, so, for example, uh, if a writer uh, writes a short story, uh, and we want to make that short story into a movie, we have to adapt the short story. We have to change it a little bit to make it into a movie. We have to make dialogue and we have to imagine the settings and the, the soundtrack and all of the things that goes into a movie. We have to change it for a cinematic form. Here, the key word is change, which has the letter A in the middle of it, just like the word adapt. Adapt has the letter A in the middle of it. So here is a simple way to remember the two words you were starting out asking about, Hakeem. 
adapt with an A, change with an A, adopt with an O, make one's own with two O's. Now this leaves uh, the third word adept, which isn't a verb, but is rather an adjective. To be adept at something is to be wonderfully skillful at it. For example, my own father is particularly adept at mathematics. He is the reason why, in fact, I get mathematics in the first place, because he was, he was teaching me uh, as I was growing up. Uh, now, uh, hopefully by the time you've watched this video, Hakeem, you too will be becoming adept at understanding the differences between adopt, adapt, adept. So how do we remember adept? To be adept is to be a kind of expert, to be experienced in something. And both adept and ex expert, or experience, but, but let's go with expert, have an E in the middle of them. So here's our final review. Adopt to make one's own, O. Adapt, change, A and adept, expert, e. Now I've just given you an example of, of the ways that I uh, have made up for myself to keep these words distinct in my head. But the wonderful thing about this kind of associative method, this method of making associations between things, is that you can do it for yourself. You can make up your own examples that may, that may come from your own experience, your own imaginative center. Uh, and if you do it that way, you will remember those things um, forever. Th that's the real secret. Uh, here, is a, here is a sentence I made up to summarize this in a different form. Adept writers can adopt a new word and adapt it to their vision. I'll share that with you one more time. Adept writers can adopt a new word and adapt it to their vision. So Hakeem, I hope that answers your question. If you have any further questions, please feel to write again uh, to me at cozygrammar.com uh, and I will look forward to answering any further questions you have. Or if you have a completely different question, um, please do send it in.